We're at St Asaph Base. Um, we've not long got back there. I was in the restroom having a brew, and Matt being old, he was uh, in another room, asleep under a desk, as he does. And calls started coming in over a force radio, thick and fast, I think it's fair to say. It was a jumble of calls uh, from neighbours and members of the public, um, and there was an air of consternation in the control room because of the nature and volume of the calls. Um, and the initial information suggested that there was um, a male with an assault rifle uh, seeking to rape his ex-partner. And at the address were her children as well. As it rolls through your minds as you go and you're thinking, OK, what are we going to be confronted with here? We've got reports of a man armed with a gun and then there's further reports he's got a machine gun. Um, and then there's the thought in your, in your mind, the, 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 the sticking thought in my mind, there's children cowering in a room with a female being viciously attacked with, with a gun to her head. So straight away I'm visualising well, that's a third party threat if that's what I'm presented with. There's only one outcome here. I haven't encountered a call of that nature really. There's a lot going on in a very short space of time. We stop, uh, it's a quite residential street, it's very early hours of the morning, there's no movement around sound carries so we decide to stop uh, probably about 50 yards away from the address as silently and quietly as we can so silent approach knock everything off get out of the vehicles no slamming of doors we want to maintain the element of surprise there's street lights behind us there is a light above the front door of this address which is a huge benefit really um, and as i'm as i'm pushing down put some shouts into the address Show your fucking hands. I can see the open door, and just as I've been getting closer, uh, a barrel has come out at a 90 degree angle in front of my eyes. It's one of those oh shit moments. Are we or are we not going to shoot him at this point? And as I've tracked along the barrel, I've seen the seam on the sides of it is not what you'd expect. But... Jesus, that is a toy. So I drop my carbine, draw my taser, and fire at him. I think I hit him with one, one probe, one barb, but at that second he starts to slam the door shut. Despite my age, I was quite spry at the time, managed to get my hand on the door handle and foot the door. And I shout at Rich, let's get this effing door open now. I've still got the taser in my right hand ready to go. And between us, we managed to push the door open. Rich goes for his taser now and kind of over the top of me and round, round my shoulder, he fires at an oblique angle. Fired the first shot, and to my surprise, he's, he's dropped. At the time, I didn't realise how it had come to work before. Either way, the result has worked, don't need the second shot. Verbals can be as good as a stun grenade sometimes, because if someone's not expecting extreme, violent language thrown at them, it, it can startle someone for a split second. A split second's all you need. You get shot again, motherfucker! Show me your fucking hands! He's poised behind the door with the knife held up above our head. If either one of us had gone in, we'd have been killed instantly because it had taken us in the neck. We've got no protection from our body armour. Uh, and it put it all into sharp clarity, really, um, that we'd taken some real risks, but we both felt they were justified at the time, and that was it. He's lucky to, to be alive. Um, and if he had been killed, that would have been the wrong outcome.